And now to Queensland's Western Darling Downs, where locals are still celebrating the planting of a world record breaking wheat crop. And come spring, if it comes off as well as it went in, this crop will not only have raised awareness of organ donations, but more than $50,000 for medical research. It's one farming family's tribute to life-saving surgery. And we should warn viewers that this story contains images from a heart transplant operation. This is Inara, one of the largest wheat properties in Australia. 45,000 acres of fertile brigolo soil at Meandara in the western Darling Downs. John Coggan's family were pioneers in this area and now the property is about to take its place in the history books for planting the world's largest paddock of wheat in 24 hours. Well, I think it's my grandson Tom that saw the... Oh, I don't know if he saw it in the Guinness Book of Records or how he picked it up and... And he said, oh, yeah, we can do this. And uh, anyway, Philip took it up and said, oh, we'll uh, have a go at it. We've got this machine here and uh, it's in the background. In this game, size does matter. And as cedars go, they don't come much bigger than this rig. It was purchased recently to help the Coggins lift productivity at a time when farm labour is about as scarce as decent rain. While they had the equipment to do the job, it seems John Coggan took some convincing that the world record attempt was worth it. What did Pa say when you told him? He didn't really agree at the start there because he didn't know what we were going to donate to. Then I said we are going to donate to Rinse Child Hospital. That's what the mum and dad said. In the end, John Coggan settled for a charity and a cause very close to his own heart. At 60 years old, he still manages to put in long days around the property. But just a few years ago, it was a very different story. Gravely ill with a rare heart condition, John Coggan handed control of the business to his son while he concentrated on the fight of his life. I saluted Philip one day and I probably broke his heart as I drove away, but I honestly, in my mind, didn't think I'd see him again. He later collapsed. Intensive care doctors at the Prince Charles Hospital in Brisbane put him in an induced coma. He underwent surgery a dozen times, but in the end, his only chance of survival was a heart transplant. Lynn Coggan reckons her car knew every bump in the 430 kilometre journey from the property to Brisbane during the five month ordeal. What was it like for you then personally, Lynn? How did you feel? One minute you're on the farm, the next minute you're in a hospital um, at your husband's bedside. Oh, well, it's a marriage vow, isn't it? Sickness and in health. But I didn't think you need stretch me out quite that much. <laughs> the day-to-day -day management of the business was left to son Philip and his wife Cindy. Oh, it was just like being thrown in the deep end for both Cindy and I. Yeah, we had a uh, big operation to run and we had very little staff when he left and uh, we what, tripled our staff while he was away. And then, uh, yeah... I think made a lot of right decisions at the time and did really well. They did so well running the place, the pair were chosen as the 2005 Queensland Grain Growers of the Year. With the farm sorted, John Coggan could focus on getting himself fixed up. And thanks to the Bush Telegraph, he was able to find a bloke in Brisbane eminently qualified to carry out the necessary repairs. I had a, a contact, uh, a old friend we'd grown up with all our lives, and his nephew happened to be John Fraser, and uh, it was in Brisbane, and he said, if you ever get into trouble, give John a ring. Well, one day in Toowoomba I did. I gave him a ring and had a yarn to him, and, and uh, yeah, when I went to Brisbane, then he took me under my wing, and I think Graham, his uncle of mine said, don't you let that bloke die. What we did was... John Coggan is we've plumbed in the numbers of how John's heart worked or how it didn't work and looked at the flow dynamics on the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart, whether there's um, holes in the heart, the VSD or the ASD, and then we can plumb in different types of artificial heart here so that we're not just practicing, we know what's going to happen and this is a fantastic asset to, to our group because we can modify and look over 10,000 hours of pump on this rig before we go into experiments or, or humans, and that's, that's key. And these look interesting here. How important were these to John Coggan? Well, these actually are John Coggan's um, Thoratec. This is the artificial heart support. For seven weeks, these artificial pumps kept John Coggan alive 
until a donor heart became available. You think uh, getting married or having a first child or a second child is a big thing in, lo in your life. When you're lying in a hospital bed and you've got five doctors at the end of your bed and they say, would you like a heart? You cannot describe what that is like. It's just something in life you just cannot describe. And there really hasn't been a day since that John Coggan hasn't reflected on his 19-year-old donor and his family's life-saving gesture. In the lead-up to the world record attempt, the Coggins attended a Thanksgiving service in Brisbane to do their bit to raise awareness of the importance of organ donation. Probably there's enough support for transplant, but there's not enough awareness of the necessity in the community for don donation or donor organs. I think people, it's not that they don't want to donate, but they're not aware of the uh, necessity of it. If you, if you think of, in this time of real darkness, letting someone take your son or your daughter's organs, you're never going to meet them again. I think it's a phenomenally generous gift. Some, you know, I, I can't go over it. Every time it happens and I'm dealing with an organ donor's family, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And I think it's a, a great thing to remind you that uh, humanity is not all bleak. Something good has come out of a terrible time of darkness. There's always a heightened sense of excitement and anticipation at planting time. But in this case, there was the added pressure of the record attempt. One of his neighbours, former ABC Rural reporter Sally Nicholl, made sure word about John Coggan's story swept through the local community, to the big smoke and around the world via web cameras and the internet. Just move all the way in for me. Thank you very much. That looks fantastic. Clearly, the Coggins, their big rig and their chosen charity were capturing people's imagination. And the tremendous grassroots support was supplemented by some of the heaviest hitters in Australian agribusiness. To set a world record, a team of four will plant non-stop for 24 hours using commercially available equipment. They must cover at least 500 hectares with at least 120 wheat seeds per square metre. The Coggins were well prepared and quietly confident. Oh, I don't think it'll be a problem. No. Well, machinery's machinery and as long as it doesn't break down, yes, I am confident that they'll break it. Well, basically, I just have to oversee the operation, uh, I'm in independent, I'll see them start and um, during the day or over the next 24 hours there will be other people to verify events, we will have to record that in this book here, um, change over tractor drivers, filling up the seat etc. So with the cedar loaded, a final check of the GPS and team pep talk, everything was in position. The Coggins planting rig comprised a 40 metre multi planter with nearly 100 tyne assemblies, almost as many wheels, and a 12,000 litre cedar. It is one of the largest of its type in the world and it's homegrown too, manufactured at Banana in central Queensland. The whole thing is pulled by a 580 horsepower tractor. And the fact that John Coggan is again able to play such a hands-on role in running this place is something he doesn't take for granted. And not only am I able to get back here, but I'm participating in it yeah, quite well again. So it's a tribute to the medical profession that I was able to do that. And uh, this is what compelled me then to uh, do some more, what we could do in this day for research. We've got some of the best success rates for transplantation in the world in Australia. But sadly and inexplicably, I think, we have one of the lowest donation rates. We're losing a couple of patients a week, I think, um, who could have a meaningful life like John Coggan. I mean, if you look at John, look how much he's truly got back in the horse, both euphemistically and, and almost uh, literally. 
team Coggan smashed the existing 500 hectare record with nine hours to spare and went on to plant an extra 400 for good measure. Landline will be keeping an eye on how this world-beating crop progresses and will be there when it's harvested in the middle of October.